Hello again, Kate Brown Pernia for Why Not a Hat. I was sort of thrashing around the other day trying to decide what to do for a video for you, and I decided that the thing I needed to do was to go through my collection of hat books and take a look at some things and see what popped up as interesting to me. Well, I came across something, in an old, a very old book that I had for a long time that I hadn't looked at in a while, so I thought I would show it to you and show you how I got my inspiration. So let's focus the camera on the table and get started. This is the book I was talking about. It's an old book from the 80s that was published in Italy at first, Il Capello da Donna, Ladies, Women's Hats. It was published in the late 80s in Italy and then in the early 90s here in America. And what it does is it goes through different periods of hats and just gives you a little description. Kind of fun to sort of peruse where we've come with hats. And when I came across this one, I thought, wouldn't that be fun to do on a video? This is a little hat from the 1950s. I believe I made a copy once upon a time, a long time ago, but I either sold it or gave it away a long time ago. But anyway, it's an interesting shape, and I thought it would be fun to show you how you could replicate this and uh, talk about the techniques used and see what you come up with. So let's get started. This is from 1950. The description here says, a black silk velvet toque that recalls the Toreador's hat and shimmering Traje de luces, suit of lights, not just in shape, but in the exquisite embroidery of pearls, jet, and semi-precious stones, with a black veil with applique of chenille and lame, private collection. Well, I looked at the Toreador's hats, and I don't think it really looks like a Toreador's hats. They have ears on them, and they're made of felt. But I can understand why the shape seemed to recall that. So let's get started. The first thing I did was make a pattern out of paper. And what I did was I just, let me cut this. I made an oblong of brown paper, 27 and a half inches by two and a half inches to cut buckram out of. We've talked about this in the Buckram Forms video, and I would encourage you to go back and review that because it talks about all the techniques for making Buckram Forms, or all the techniques you, from, that you'll need in this video, anyway. But what's interesting about this hat is that you, you make this form, but how do you get it to, to do that funny shape? Well, the trick is, it's what's called, I think in mathematics circle, a Mobius strip. You flip one side like this to get it to shape that way. Cool, huh? Now I add, I said it was 27 and a half inches long. Well, I had to add two inches so that we could sew the pieces together and you'd have a stable foot. So let me show you. Here we go. Here is our, our buckram strip with a two and a half inch overlap. Now I'm going to take this off and just flip one of the sides up like this. There we go. You want to keep it nice and straight. Now this piece of buckram is cut on the bias so that you can manage the curves. But now you see what happens. You get this little action and you can adjust your shape by adjusting the angle of the overlap. So that's how you end up with that sort of ears shape. Now, the real trick to this particular hat is going to be wiring the edges. And I will tell you, I had quite a time doing it. I used number 19 millinery wire, which is the sturdier, heavier duty, just because it's going to manage the shape of the hat. And so you want something that's pretty sturdy, but it also makes it difficult to stitch on because you're working around these curves all the time. 
You can do it. It just takes patience. And then after you get it wired, you use your French elastic. Again, it's in the Buckram Forms video, so you can review that to see how it's done. I'm going to move ahead here and show you what I've got started. Here we have a form that I've already put together and I've covered it with this beautiful silk fabric that I found in Paris many years ago. Um, I was on a couture tour and they took us to a, a remnant shop that sold leftovers from the couture houses of beautiful fabrics. I believe this was a Christian Lacroix fabric, but I could be wrong. Anyway, that was interesting about this fabric is it has, has a smooth side, which I thought was probably the right side, but I like the other side that has little rough bits of what looks like chenille that could also be the correct side. Either way, it makes a beautiful hat. So what I did was I made the form. Now when you go to cut your fabric to cover the form, I'm just going to pin it here because it's not sewn together yet. Bent that pin. Um, when you go to cut the fabric to cover your form, you're going to use the same pattern that you use to cut your buckram form. However, you want to add a generous seam allowance on both sides, and you're going to cut two of these, one for the lining and one for the outside covering. Now this is what they call a Mobius, so it goes around and around and around, but you still need two pieces. Now, you do the underside first, and just use an, a regular stitch to stitch the fabric to the French elastic on your edges. Now I was being very chintzy. I didn't, I didn't cut a wide enough piece, so I really had to struggle because this fabric shreds a bit, and so that's why I encourage you to give yourself a generous seam allowance. You can always cut off the extra if it's too bulky. But give yourself plenty to work with. When I went to cover the outside edge, I added a lot more. So as you can see, I've stitched the underside and now I'm getting ready just to finish. You see, you have to sort of fiddle around like this when you're sewing it. But what I'm going to do is finish this up for you and then we're going to talk about how we're going to trim it. You fold under the edges and just use a whip stitch to the edge of your previous fabric. I'm going to fold it under here. There we go. You'll be wrestling with this ni number 19 wire a bit, but it'll be worth it in the end. So now you just roll it under pin it. I use these finer pins so I don't tear up the silk too much. Oops. Same thing on the other side. You have to wrestle with it, but it's totally worth it. You see how this fabric wants to shred. Pin, that's not going to help me any. You can, when, when you have something like this, you can just use your pin to tuck it under like this and like this. And I think I have a threaded needle here. Yes, here it is. So the way I've been stitching this is just a simple whip stitch because this black thread is not going to show on this fabric. If you have a different kind of fabric where you don't want the thread to show, you'd have to be, use a little bit more of an invisible stitch. But this is working just fine. And you see it goes pretty quickly when you get to this point, except when the thread gets tangled around the Mobius. <laughs> Here we go. Now, 
and you can go over the wire once in a while or just go through the fabric. It's really up to you. Yeah, I have a ways to go yet here. Sometimes I use my knee to hold this, but it's kind of hard to do that on video, so I'll just have to wrestle with it. Here we are up to the to the join. And I'm going to knot it here. And then go ahead and do this join. Then we can sew the pieces together. Now I have a little bit more of edge to sew, so I'm going to knot it off again here. I knot, I knot uh, periodically as I'm sewing hand stitching like this, just because sometimes I get a little overly enthusiastic and pull the thread a little too tight and break it, even though this is hand stitching thread and it's pretty tough. If you do that and you haven't knotted it off periodically, then you sometimes have a, a real mess to fix up. Here we go almost done. I think we're back to where we finished off before so I can knot it finally and get on to the next step. Bury that tail of the thread in there. There, so now our Mobius strip is completely covered. And the way you fix your shape is you just tug the ends until you get it the shape you like. And that's about the way I like it. Kind of broad, so that it works a bit like a headband, but with, I guess, ears. Now I'm going to stitch these two pieces together. You didn't want to stitch this together before you covered the form because you'd never get the fabric on correctly. So you have to save this step for last. But I'm going to pin this and run some stitches through the hat to secure those two ends to get those two pieces together. Not really ends because there's no end on this anymore. Knot off your end of your thread. I need my thimble for this. Now 
and I'm just going to follow the edges of the wire. There's a double layer of buckram under there, so it's a little tougher to push the needle through, but you can do it. Again, trying to hide your... So it keeps picking up ends here. There we go. Just securing these two pieces together. Of course, this is a hat that really a lot will depend on the fabric you choose. The one in the original 1950 hat was black velvet, which is a lovely fabric, but sometimes a little bit difficult to work with. And the really good stuff is getting harder and harder to find. That was probably silk velvet, which I have a little of. It's very soft, beautiful fabric but it slips and slides, it's hard. So you might want to choose something for your first one that's a little easier to, to play with. Maybe a brocade. You could even do this in denim if you wanted. I mean, it would be a totally different type of hat, but why not? I mean, people don't dress up that much anymore. I think denim is sort of becoming the go-to fabric. I have a number of denim hats. So I'm going to knot here and then do the other line. And then we'll move on to trimming the hat. Knot it off. And then we can go to the fun part. Actually, it's all fun, isn't it? Knot it. And one more just for insurance. There you go. And there's really no front and back, so you can kind of decide which... I can take this out. And there's your hat. Now, how shall we trim this? You could put a beautiful brooch on there, or flowers, or feathers, any number of things. But I thought it would be kind of fun to use some of these cool buttons that I found these are just uh, nothing special. Uh, my favorite button store is in New York, and I haven't been able to get up there lately. So I found these at Joann's. These are just little plastic Blumenthal Lansing buttons. But I thought that they would look nice because they look a bit like jewels. Maybe one here. Now, the original hat had fancy embroidery and lots of expensive jewels, but we're not going to go that route yet. Maybe like this. Remember, the uh, trim usually goes on the right side of the hat. The right side of the wearer, that is. One more. Three, five, seven. That's the usual rule. An odd number for some reason. Seems to be more aesthetically pleasing. So we'll stick with that. You can play around with the placement until you get it the way you like it. Perhaps this one's a little too high up, maybe here. 
right here. There you go. I'll stitch those on. Now, what about veiling? A lot of people like veiling. I don't always like veiling down around my nose, but sometimes veiling adds a little extra mystery to a hat. Now, I didn't have any brown or gold vintage veiling. Veiling is getting hard to find, but I find sometimes you can substitute something like the sparkly tool. This is very inexpensive. You can buy in a fabric store. So what I did was I cut a, a piece 11 inches by 20, 20 inches long and 11 inches deep. And then I cut it, I, I curved, as you can see the ends, I curved the ends from the center front all the way up to the outside edges. And I'll show you how to gather tool. I've already started my thread here. I learned this in millinery school. You, you start with a knot and you just roll the, the needle over the edge of the, to, of the tool or the veiling, whatever you're using, and just pick up the edge of the veiling. I fold it under just a little bit and it goes pretty fast, about once about every half inch or so, maybe a little less, three eighths maybe. Like that, pull your thread through, and you can gather your veiling like that. I've got one finished, so I, will, I won't keep you on that. So here we have the finished product. Now, you could start it in the back here and cover the whole hat, or as in the 50s hat that we're copying, have it peek out from underneath the hat like this. Stitch it to the inside. I'm just going to pin it here for the moment so we can see what it looks like. And you can stitch it in the center and then a, on a couple of spots on the outside edges like that. And you don't want the veil to come much below your nose. And you want it to be able to scrunch it up if you are sipping a cocktail or something. And this way, if you decide you don't like that veil tickling your face, you can just put it up over the hat and have it act like a little cloud over the hat. So play around with it, have some fun, and send me your comments about what you would like to see me show you how to do. Um, and in the meantime, why not a hat? <laughs>